After studying this module, you shall be able to know various techniques of risk analysis, learn the correlation between different types of risks, identify the factors affecting risk and analyze the nature of risks. Any investment is made with the objective of generating returns. However, very high returns are not always desirable as they are generally accompanied with high risk. The investors may be risk taking, risk averse or risk neutral. An individual who is risk taking should have the risk bearing capacity or risk tolerance. Therefore, before undertaking any project, two things are required to be assessed. One is the investor's risk bearing capacity and his individual inclination towards risk and second is the element of risk present in the project for the given level of return. The investor then matches the two and if they commensurate he considers undertaking the project. For this the investor should be aware of techniques and ways in which the risk can be measured. Measures of risk. Risk means the variability in the returns. If an assets return has no variability it has no risk. An investor analyzing a series of returns on an investment over a period of years needs to know something about the variability of its returns. Therefore, the statistical methods of measuring the variation in data also called as measures of dispersion are effective tools to measure the risk. Methods of measuring risk. Number one is range. Range is a measure of absolute deviation. It is the difference between the largest and the smallest item in the given data. In measuring risk, it is the difference between highest possible rate of return and the lowest possible rate of return. But the problem in using range is that it is based on extreme values only. We can look at this example. Let us suppose that Mr. X goes to a portfolio manager who tells him that return on his investment can assume any of the following expected figures depending on the likely market scenario. The portfolio manager is waiting for Mr. X reply whether he would like to go ahead with the investment or not. Mr. X wants to assess the risk in making the investment. The returns may be 5%, 10%, 12%, 15% or 18%. The possible returns can be and the range will be 18 minus 5% which will be equal to 13%. That is the difference between the largest and the smallest return. Then there is another example. Suppose Mr. X goes to another portfolio manager and he gives the following variability of returns. Range will be the difference between the smallest and the largest item. Here 30% minus 2% is equal to 28%. Since the range given by the second portfolio manager is more than the range given by the first portfolio manager, there is more risk in investing with portfolio manager 2 if range as a measure of risk is considered. The second investment would be perceived to be more risky than the first and we can also see that the return in investment second is also more than the return in investment first. However, this is not always necessary that higher risk would imply higher return. A risky project raises the expectations of high returns. 
which may or may not be fulfilled. Mean absolute deviation. Mean absolute deviation measures the deviation of the returns from their respective mean. However, in considering these deviations, the direction is ignored. Therefore, the modulus of deviations is considered. It is given by the average of modulus of deviations of returns from mean return, standard deviation. This is the most important measure of risk. For all practical purposes, this is the most commonly used measure. It has certain advantages. These are, unlike the range, standard deviation considers every possible event and assigns each event a weight equal to its probability. It is a measure of dispersion around the expected value. It is obtained as the square root of the sum of squared differences multiplied by their probabilities. For example, let the returns from an investment without considering possibility as shown in this table. Mean return will be 5 plus 10 plus 15 divided by 3 equal to 10 percent. Standard deviation shall be square root of deviation from each cell that is 5 minus 10 square plus 10 minus 10 square plus 15 minus 10 square divided by 3 which will be equal to 4.08 percent approximately. Taking another example where the returns are given together with the probabilities in this table. Here the standard deviation will be equal to 1.41 percent variance. The square of standard deviations is called as variance. This may also be alternatively used as a measure of risk and conveys the same meaning. Semi variance. It is argued that a person is interested in measuring the risk of an investment and he is worried about the variability in the returns. But variability can move in both directions, positive as well as the negative. The investor will be more than happy if the return is more than expected. That means that the investor is not upset by any upside variation and he is only worried about the downside movements. In such circumstances, a measure which gives only the downside risk is more relevant measure. For example, if we take an investment that can generate these returns shown in the table with respective probabilities, the semi variance can be calculated in this way. Now the mean return is 750, semi variance is equal to 0 0.25 multiplied by 0 square plus 0 0.25 multiplied by 0 square plus 0 0.25 multiplied by 50 square plus 0 0.25 multiplied by 250 square which is equal to 62.5 plus 2500 which is equal to 2562.5 coefficient of variation standard deviation divided by mean is known as coefficient of variation. This is a relative measure of risk. It shows the variation as a factor of return. Of all these measures, standard deviation is the most commonly used measure for a few reasons. The standard deviation is preferred if the returns are normally distributed. Standard deviation and mean contains all the information about distribution. It is easy to calculate and understand. And thirdly, the expected return of the investment can be best described as a function of mean and standard deviation. Techniques of risk analysis. Appraisal of projects would require applying the method of measuring risk by using any of the following techniques. The first one is sensitivity analysis. The net present value of the project is calculated by using the stream of cash flows generated by it. 
the cash inflows depend upon a number of variables which are assumed to remain constant. For example, the cash flows would depend upon the selling price per unit of the product. It would depend upon the variable cost per unit, the fixed cost, tax rates and number of units sold. It will not be a rational approach to take a decision keeping all the variables fixed. At least some methodology should be adopted to be able to know the impact of a slight change in any of these variables on the NPV of a project. This technique is known as sensitivity analysis. The model is NPV is equal to summation Q into P minus V minus F minus D to be multiplied with 1 minus T and this result is to be added with D divided by 1 plus K raised to power T plus S 1 plus K whole raised to power N minus I where NPV is the net present value, Q number of units sold, P the selling price per unit, V the variable cost per unit, F the fixed cost, D depreciation, T tax rate, small t time period, N is equal to life of the project in years, K cost of capital, S salvage value and I the initial investment. Now we can have an example. A company sells 5000 units of product X at the rate of rupees 50 per unit. The variable cost of manufacturing the product is rupees 30 and the fixed cash cost is rupees 40,000. Considering the same figures for two years and the cost of capital at 10%, tax rate 40%, the cash inflows ignoring depreciation will be calculated in this way. 5000 multiplied by 50 minus 30 minus 40,000 this result will be equal to 36,000 divided by 1.1 plus 36,000 divided by 1.1 square which will be equal to rupees 62,479. Now if the initial cost of project is rupees 50,000 the NPV will be rupees 12,479. Sensitivity analysis. Let the selling price drops by 10%. The new selling price will be rupees 45. Keeping all other things constant, the NPV will decrease by rupees 26,033 that is a decrease by 208%. Therefore, we can see that NPV is extremely sensitive towards change in selling price of the unit. And this can be calculated as 5000 to be multiplied by 45 minus 30 minus 40,000 and this result is to be multiplied with 1 minus 0.4 which will be equal to rupees 21,000. Present value of cash inflows will be equal to 21,000 to be divided with 1.1 and added with 21,000 divided by 1.1 square which will be equal to rupees 36446. So the NPV will be equal to 36446 minus 50,000 that is it will be equal to minus rupees 13,554. Percentage change in NPV is equal to 12,479 minus minus 13,000 554 to be divided with 12,479 which will be equal to 26,033 divided by 12,479. 
This is sensitivity analysis and it measures the impact on the chosen merit criteria. Here NPP. Thus risk is analyzed and measured. Under this technique impact on the NPV of the project of a certain percentage increase or decrease in a single variable is estimated. This helps in analyzing the risk of a project. The technique helps in identifying those variables the project is most sensitive towards. However, while doing sensitivity analysis, only one variable is altered at a given point of time, keeping all other variables constant. The variables are in fact interlinked. If the impact of change in price is considered keeping the demand of units constant, it will be a mistake, especially if the demand for the product is elastic. With the increase in price, the NPV might increase, but the demand will fall down and lesser units will be sold. The NPV might simultaneously decrease. Thus, sensitivity analysis may give misleading results. Therefore, this technique has limited scope. Scenario analysis. Under this method of risk analysis, all possible permutations and combinations of different variables are considered. Each scenario presents a unique output. All scenarios are then compared. This technique of risk analysis brings to the fore the worst possible outcome. If the project is still acceptable, the probability of risk is assessed. This technique understands interlink between the different variables. A scenario of increased selling price in the product is depicted when the demand remains constant and another scenario where there is a corresponding decrease in demand. Therefore, all scenarios are accounted for. However, even this cannot be considered as a foolproof technique. Monte Carlo technique of simulation. This is more realistic technique of risk analysis. The merit criterion is judged on basis of many variables. Some variables are such over which the decision maker has control but there are some variables which are stochastic in nature. The variables over which the decision maker has control are called as parameters and the ones over which the decision maker does not have any control are termed as variables. The investor will have no control over variables. The decision maker fixes the parameters and past data is analyzed to find the frequency of occurrence of all the stochastic variables. This is used to generate a probabilistic model and random numbers are used for all the variables and a randomly generated combination of different variables helps us in taking an informed decision. There are certain steps in Monte Carlo simulation. The first step is to formulate the model for the project, then to specify parameters then to determine the probability distribution of exogenous variables. Then select random numbers to correspond to the variables and put these numbers in the model. Then to find the outcome of the model and finally the frequency distribution of the outcomes should be plotted. The final result of a Monte Carlo simulation is probability distribution of NPV or IRR. This can help us find the risk of having a less than zero NPV or an IRR less than the required percentage. Monte Carlo simulation helps measure total risk and does not segregate the risk into systematic and unsystematic. Yet the method is very versatile and useful. 
it has the capacity to deal with many variables simultaneously and also their complex interrelationship. Decision tree analysis. This technique of risk analysis helps in taking those decisions which are sequential in nature. A systematic decision tree is constructed gradually guiding the investor to the right path. The investor starts with one or more option to begin with and he has no control over the outcome. The first step is to construct a decision tree of the various alternatives in a sequential manner one after the other. The second step would be to assign the probabilities to the various outcomes. The monetary benefits attached to each outcome are also determined. The expected value at each node of decision tree is worked out and the most favorable decision is arrived at. There can be more than two stages in the decision tree. The process of evaluating the decision tree can be analyzed in this way. The starting point to resolve the decision would be the right hand end. The expected monetary value at various chance points that come first are calculated. Soon keep moving leftwards. At each final step of decision point, the best alternative should be selected while the rest will then onwards be ignored. Proceeding in this manner towards left, the starting point would be reached and the best decision would be taken. NPV criteria. This method is primarily used as an appraisal technique or criterion to reach a decision. However, it can also be utilized to analyze the risk. Normally, the future cash flows are discounted at an appropriate rate of interest which is adjusted for risk. It is also possible to measure the standard deviation of NPV. When standard deviation is measured, the NPV should be calculated using the risk-free discount rate. Otherwise, the effect of the risk will be reflected twice. While calculating the standard deviation, the correlation between returns should also be considered. In moderately correlated data, the technique of scenario analysis is used. The NPV, if it follows normal distribution, can be plotted against the normal distribution curve and then the measure of probability of the project going in loss or below the zero level is asserted. This will help in analyzing the risk. For example, if the NPV of the project is rupees 50,000 with a standard deviation of rupees 2400, then the probability of loss from the project will be Z is equal to 0 minus 50,000 divided by 2400, which will be equal to minus 0 0.20875. Area to the left of Z is equal to minus 2.0833 under the standard normal curve is approximately 2%. Therefore, the risk of project for incurring losses is only 2%. Subjective risk analysis. This method of risk analysis is more subjective rather than objective. After applying these techniques, a well experienced and an expert can use these techniques and their results to be able to give a better judgment of the prevailing risk in the project. Risks are often interrelated, so unless some judgment and subjectivity is added to the risk analysis technique, the overall impact of all the risks cannot be estimated. For example, if an industry decides to develop methods and rules for self-regulation so as to avoid the risk of government interference, 
it may increase other risks of sharing the knowledge and other aspects or trade secrets of the business. Now let us summarize what we have learned from this module. This module deals with measuring risks and techniques of risk analysis. It deals with methods of risk measurement, various statistical methods of measure of dispersion are also a good measure of risk of a project and these are range, mean absolute deviation, standard deviation, variance and semi-variance. Amongst the various methods, standard deviation is considered as the best measure and it is also the most commonly used method. The techniques of risk analysis help in evaluating the risk of a project. These techniques include the sensitivity analysis which measures the impact on the merit criterion of a small percentage change in any one particular variable at a time. This can be scenario analysis. This technique takes all the possible combinations of different variables and creates a unique scenario. The Monte Carlo simulation takes random numbers to generate an outcome with many variables simultaneously together with their complex interlinkages. Then the decision tree analysis which is a technique applied to reach a rational decision where a sequential action has to be decided at each point from where the different possible outcomes may result depending upon what state may occur. Then NPV criterion plotted against a normal distribution curve and analyzing the risk by finding the area or probability under the normal distribution curve which is below the zero NPV. That's all with this module. Thank you.